Hello everyone, welcome back to our channel. Now in today's video, we will be discussing about a random variable that is discrete and continuous and you will be able to distinguish between discrete and continuous random variable. And you will also find the possible values of a random variable and as well as illustrate a probability distribution for a discrete random variable and its properties. So it might be familiar with you because some of these topics have been discussed already in our previous videos. However, there are certain concepts that you need to understand before we're going to proceed to our new topic. So I hope that you will be learning a lot in, in, in this entire week lesson. So let's get started. Now in today's video, we will be discussing about week 1 for probability and statistics. Now you might be wondering, but we already have 5 um, videos as the introduction before starting our um, this particular group of topics. Okay, so we have the comp competencies for week 1. We have illustrates a random variable, both discrete and continuous. Anyway, these are just related to the previous, some of the previous videos. And then we also have distinguishes between a discrete and a continuous random variable. Then we also have finds the possible values of random variable. Then for number four, we have illustrates of probability distribution for a discrete random variable and its properties okay so uh, you've noticed that the competencies we already tackled uh, some of these competencies in our previous videos so some will be repeated well some there will be new concepts that you will learn in this video so just keep in just stay and let's start now since this is for the entire week we'll start with the lesson objectives for day one under the knowledge we have defines and illustrates random variables under the skills we have distinguishes between a discrete and continuous variable and for the effective develops perseverance and accuracy in performing various activities related to random variables it means to say that at the end of this first video lesson you, are, you will be going to um, able to achieve all of these objectives now let's start illustration of random variables now what is statistics then now it came from an Itali Italian word statu or in Latin word status which means political state or government Statistics is a branch of science that deals with the collection, organization, analysis of data, and drawing of inferences from samples for the whole population. Now, what do you mean by probability? Now, have you seen this fortune, wheel of fortune? Or have you noticed somebody will just going to throw or toss a coin? Or have you seen a dice? So, the probability is actually the degree of likelihood for an event to happen in layman's term. So, for example, tossing a coin twice. So, if you will be asked how many or what's the probability that two heads will come out or two tails will come out. Example, rolling a dice. Okay? So, what is the probability that three will be will appear or will come out so that is an example where the probability is being used okay let's start with an experiment tossing a coin twice for example okay and there are four possible outcomes. 
So, we have here, remember you are tossing a coin twice. So, it could be, you are using one coin and you toss it twice. So, you can have two heads. You can also have a head and a tail. You can also have tail and a head. And you can also have two tails. Okay. Then, if X is a random variable representing the number of tails in the outcomes, then X would be 0, 1, 2. Okay. Why is this so? If X is a random variable representing the number of tails in the outcomes, then... So, we're talking about the number of tails in the outcome. So, for the first outcome, two heads. So, the random variable, the number for here, two heads. And remember, X represents a random variable for number of tails in the outcomes. For the outcomes with two heads, we don't have tail. So, it's zero. Then for the second outcome, head, tail, and tail, head, you have one. Here we have got one tail, and here also we got one tail. Therefore, we write here one. We don't need to repeat twice the number. Okay, so we don't need to write one, one. So just write it once when it's the same um, number of outcomes. Then two tails, you have T, T, that means two. Two tails. Therefore, this is now our random variable for the number of tails in the outcome. So you have zero, one, and two. Okay, let's continue. And why is that so? So, again, X is the number of tails. That is, okay, we, I already explained this one. But for you to understand it further, you have it here. You have 0, 1, 1, 2. And again, in the set, you don't need to write the same number. That's why you have x is a set of 0, 1, 2. Where in x is the number of tails. Therefore, the probability p of x will come out. So you will have it here. This is the probability. If your x is 0, 1, 2, the probability would be 1 fourth. Why is it 1 fourth? Okay. Since it's 0, look at this one. How many outcomes? It could be 0, 1, 1, 2. So we, if we're going to count 1, 2, 3, 4. There are 4. And the chance of having 2 heads, meaning without the tail, is only 1. The chance is 1, which is 0. So you will have here 1 fourth. Okay. Meaning the chance that you will get 0 is 1. And for 1, how many 1 here? You have 2, right? 1 here, another 1. Therefore, there are 2 ones. You are going to write 2 over 4 because the number of possible outcomes, you have 1, 2, 3, 4. You have 2 fourths or 1 half. Then for 2, you have 1 possible outcome and then there are, this is only 1, 2. So you have 2, then you have 1 fourth because there's only 1 that is that has two tails okay i hope you understand the concept of the probability again this counts based on here so zero you only have one zero so that's is you write one and then there are four numbers here you get four and for one you get two number ones here and then over there are four values here that's why two over four or one half for two you only have one number that is two 
and then there are four numbers here so you have one fourth okay continue okay so we have here a dice okay let's have an activity possible outcomes or s of rolling a fair dice so considering you have you're rolling a dice okay rolling a fair die so the numbers uh, this is the sample space one two three four five six okay if your random variable is odd number if this is the sample space one to six one is an odd number you are going to write here one so chance if this will come out then the chance is one if the sample space if it will come out two then it's zero because two is not an odd number if the sample space is three then the odd number would be one because three is an odd number then if it is four then the odd number is zero then if it's five then the odd number is one if six then it's even okay if six then it's zero because it's an even number so you have noticed that every odd number you write one meaning the chance is if one appears or come out then there is one then for one three and five the three of them has a probability of one okay let's continue x is called the random variable so we have the random variable now would be 0, 1. Okay. Because it will not going to repeat. Okay. Next would be. Okay. But if you're going to think of the probability distribution table, it becomes for 0, you have 3 over 6 or 1 half. For 1, you have 3 over 6 also or 1 half because there are. For 0, you have 1, 2, 3. For 1, you have 1, 2, 3. Okay. Now, let's proceed to definition of terms. So, what is then an experiment? Now, an experiment is any movement that should be possible more than once under comparative condition. Like, for example, tossing a coin. And what about a sample space? A sample space is the arrangement of every possible outcome of an experiment. Example, head or tail. So this is an arrangement because head tail tail head is different and is a different arrangement then we also have random this random is the chosen or done without a particular plan or pattern example is during raffle tickets or names from above then what about variable so a variable is a quantity that can have any one of a set values or a symbol that represents such a quantity example age civil status or x y z how about random variable random variable is the value depends on the outcome of the random process a variable whose value is a numerical outcome of a random phenomenon it's denoted with a capital letter just like a, ra uh, a random variable x so discrete or continuous i know that you are you mastered this already anyway but we are still going to just recall example of discrete or continuous we have number of heads number of tails number of boys in the family for the discrete random variable a variable that can take up a finite number of distinct values meaning they are countable so let's have this illustration discrete random variable now, a random variable which can only view a countable amount of values. Example, flipping, flipping a coin. Then, let's try this one, tossing a coin. Now, for toss your one peso coin three times and record in your notebook the results of the three tosses. Now, in order to write the result easily, use letter H for the heads and letter T for the tails. So, experiment is tossing a coin three times the sample space so these are possible outcomes the sample space would be 
Okay? It could be three tails, then tails, tails, then head. You can have tail, head, and tail. Then head, double tails, then tails, then two heads. Then head, tail, head, then he head, head, tail, then three heads. Okay? So this is now the sample space. Now determine the number of heads that appear. What is the random variable here? So for the sample space, this one, and we're talking about the number of heads, which is our rat x. Okay? So we are looking for the random variable. So you have here for tails, we have here zero because we're looking at the number of heads. Here for this one, you got one head. This outcome, you got one head. This one, you got still one head. Then this one is two heads. This one gives two heads. This is two heads. And then you have three heads. Okay. So this is how you're going to write the random variable. Now try this one. Defective cell phones. For example, suppose two cell phones are tested at random. We want to find out the number of defective cell phones that occurs that occur. In order to write the result easily, use letter D for the defective cell phone and letter N for the non-defective. So we have here the experiment occurrence of defective cell phones. We have defective, defective, then defective and not defective, then not defective, then defective, then both not defectives. So find out of the number of defective cell phones that occur. So what is the random variable here? So you have the sample space, you have defective, defective, there are two. Because we're talking about the number of defective cell phones. For defective, the non-defective, you have one. Okay? For non-defective and defective, you got one. You will just look at letter D. You will just count the letter D, which stands for defective. For both non-defectives, then zero. The illustrating random variables. Continuous random variable. A random variable that take an interminably uncountable number of potential values regularly measurable amounts. Now, illustration. Our illustrating random variables, let's say distance traveled. Suppose an experiment will be conducted to determine the distance traveled of a certain type of car given 5 liters gasoline over a prescribed test course. So, types of car, let's say A, B, C, D, and E, then the distance traveled for 5 liters of gasoline. You have 80.65 kilometers, B is 58.4 49 kilometers C is 65.79 kilometers D is 34.01 kilometers then E is 58.14 kilometers okay now more examples of continuous random variable since it, it could be height of grade 11 TVL students Weight of your classmates age 16 to 20. Time it takes to get to school. Distance travel from home to school. So these are not countable. Then types of random variables. We have here discrete random variable versus continuous random variable. Again, the values are obtained by counting. Then you can count the number of the learners in a section. And you can count the COVID-19 patients in hospital. For the continuous random variable, it's like your age. You, you could be 15 years old and 10 months, or 7 days and 6 hours. Or you can measure your height and it could be 1.5 meters or 2.1 meters. Okay, now I want you to identify a possible random variable of the following statements. Okay. So if you take a quiz, the outcomes would be scores of the students. Is that a continuous or discrete? Okay, you're just going to write that on your activity notebook. How about this one? Just label it developing mastery. How about uh, breakfast meal? 
the outcomes will be taken or not taken the breakfast meal so is that a continuous or a or discrete okay Basically, these are discrete variables, but if you are identify a possible random variable of the following statements, so take a quiz, the outcomes will be scores of the students. That will be the random variable. For the breakfast meal, the outcomes will be taken or not taken the breakfast meal. So there are two. So you don't need to answer this one because you already have the outcomes. You already have the example. Okay, television shows. The outcomes would be the number of hours spent watching TV shows. Okay. Then walking from home to school. The outcomes would be the distance traveled in kilometers, the hours spent in walking. Basically, this is continuous and as well as number three. Okay. Now, let's have an application. Cite a real-life situation relating to discrete and continuous random variable. Then answer this, the following for the generalization. So what is random variable? For number two, what are the two types of random variable? And number three, differentiate the two types of random variable. Okay. The next, classify each random variable as either discrete or continuous. Write D if discrete and C if continuous. But you have to um, copy an answer. The number of arrivals at an emergency room between midnight and 6 a.m. The weight of a box of cereal labeled 18 ounces. The number of applicants for a job. The temperature of a cup of coffee served at a restaurant. The number of boys in a randomly selected three-child family. Recording the number of hours and specific students use their mobile phone for the past five days. Buying two trays of egg in the market. Recording the gender of the family members in the households of a certain barangay. The hotness or coldness of water. The average wavelength during the months of June and July. Okay, so in your, you are going to answer that in your activity notebook. And this one, still in your activity notebook, how do you describe a discrete random variable? And how do you describe a continuous random variable? Okay, so thank you for listening lesson one or day one. Let us proceed to next objectives. This is intended for day two to three. Okay, so this time you will be def at the end of this lesson, um, you will be able to define a statistical experiment and finds the possible values of a random variable and develops perseverance and accuracy in performing various activities related to random variables. Okay, let's start. Now, possible values of random variables. Okay, remember in our lesson one, day one, we toss a coin. We can toss a coin twice. We can also toss a coin three times and even four times or more. And by definition, a statistical experiment is a process or activity that generates data. Examples of statistical experiment are tossing a coin, rolling a die, time listing, and etc. Conducting a survey to solicit opinion of people can also be considered a statistical experiment. Now show the possible values of random variables, like tossing three coins and counting the number of heads, counting the number of students in the classroom who are present today and obtaining the height of students now let's explore now in tossing a coin four times how many outcomes corresponds to each value of the random variable okay so the question is how many outcomes corresponds to each value of a random variable so what if the coin would be tossed five times or six times or seven times or eight even eight times or more now this will help us now this is the we call it like a magic thing like the base pascal or a mathematician a famous mathematician um, were able was able to 
come up with a so-called Pascal's Triangle. So it's, it is named after him. So showing the Pascal's Triangle to identify the possible outcomes for choosing a coin n times. So we're going to use the Pascal's Triangle. So by the way, this is the pattern for Pascal's Triangle. You write it one at first, then write one, one on the other side. Then next will be one, two, then one. Then you're going to write always one at the last side. Then this two we come up to because we added the the two uh, one plus one here that gives two. Then here you, are, you write one and then here one plus two that gives three and then two plus one that gives three. Then write one again and so on. The same is true with here. One the pattern is then one plus three you have four. Three plus three you have got six. Three plus one you got four. Then write one and so on. It will continue. Okay, now try to relate the outcomes of the number in Pascal's triangle. So this is the formula. However, we need to understand it better. We will have an example. Now for tossing the coin four times, there will be five possible values. So this, this is our um, random variable now. There are five possible values. Okay, now you have the the five possible values are 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. And here with 1, 4, 6, 4, 1 outcomes respectively. Meaning, if it is 0, if the value is 0, there is one outcome. If the value is 1, there are 4 outcomes. If the value is 2, there are 6 outcomes. If the value of 3, it is, there are 4 outcomes. If the value is 4, there is 1 outcome. Now, what have you noticed with the number of outcomes or the outcomes remember you have here four times we toss a coin four times so in general for n tosses of a coin there are n plus one possible values so since we toss a coin four times so since it's four times then it could be the the possible values would be n plus 1. So we, can, we will have 5 possible values. That's why we have here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. But we start with 0. So there are 5 possible values and we always start with 0. Now if um, k is possible value, then there are ncx of nk. This is k is the possible value. N is the number of tosses is equal to N factorial over K factorial times the quantity of N minus K factorial. Now you might be wondering what is N factorial. N factorial, it means that, um, okay, for a moment. Oh, there's no pen here. I was looking for maybe something that we can write. Oh, we can. Okay, for example, this is 4 factorial. 4 factorial. The factorial states that um, you're going to multiply 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Okay, that is the value of how we are going to uh, operate factorial. Okay? If you have 3 factorial, that is 3 times 2 times 1. So you will multiply the consecutively the remaining um, integers or counting numbers less than that number given so if you're if for five coins there are six possible values because again you have five tosses of a coin so there are n plus one so that is five plus one you will get six possible values so you will start again with 0, you have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. With 1, 5, 10, 10, 5, 1 outcomes respectively. Now, how are we going to use the Pascal's triangle then? So where can we see the Pascal where can we see these values in Pascal's triangle? So let's go back to Pascal triangle. Let's focus our attention first when we are going to toss up the coin four times. Okay, let's take a look. We are going to toss a coin four times, so it's here. We're going to look at the number here. This is number four. One, two, three, four. If you toss the coin four times, then there will be five possible outcomes. 
and this will be the number of outcomes or the number of, of outcomes per value okay for a moment okay these are the number of outcomes for that particular value for the value um, zero there is one possible outcome then for the value one there are four possible outcomes for the value two there are six possible outcomes and then for the value three there are four then for the value four we have one outcome okay same is true for tossing five coins there are six possible values so you will have it here five possible a uh, six possible values we're going to count one two three four five six and the five possible values will start with zero start with zero one two three four five and then you are going to look at the you're going to look at here you have one five ten ten five one so it you're going to pair it respectively for the outcome zero you will have one for the outcome one you will have five for the outcome two you will have ten for the outcome three you have ten for the outcome four you have five and then for the outcome five you will have one okay let's check okay you have it here okay that is respectively that is you're going to pair that one so that is how you're going to apply the pascal's triangle for tossing the coin n times or n number of times again if it is n number of times when you toss a coin there are always n plus one possible values and then you're going to use the pascal's triangle to look for the outcomes the respective outcomes okay so i hope you understand this particular concept let's proceed now finding the values of a random variable let's have an example suppose three coins are tossed let y be the random variable representing the number of tails that occur find the values of the random variable y so determine the sample space the sample space would be this one three tails you have THT, TTH, HTT, HTH, THH, HHT, then HHH. Again, T stands for tail, then H stands for head. Okay, this is our sample space. Then the possible outcomes, you have it here. You're going to write it like that. And then the value of the random variable Y. Okay, so let y be the random variable representing the number of tails that occur so the number of tails that occur there are three tails you got one, three then here we got two tails here we got two then we also have two then we got one then one one t and then zero so remember suppose the coins are tossed three coins okay we're talking about three coins that are tossed so three coins that are tossed so it will be there will be four possible outcomes and it will always start with zero that is zero one two three okay then you can go back to the pascal's triangle zero got one and for one value you will have three for two value you got three and for three value you got one so going back to pascal triangle that is here that is located here this one because these are there are three coins that are being tossed so three plus one so there are four possible outcomes that is zero one two three okay if so this is the corresponding outcomes per value okay i hope you understand that okay let's continue now finding the values of a random variable example two the balls are drawn in a succession in succession without replacement from a box containing five red balls and six yellow balls let z be the random variable representing the number of yellow balls find the values of the random variable z now determine the sample size you have red red 
red yellow yellow red and yellow yellow the possible outcomes is here the value of the random variable z so we are looking at the value of the random variable z which is let's see with the random variable of the number with yellow balls there is no yellow here there's no y so that's zero here we get one y one yellow here another one yellow then here we got two yellows so the random var variable will be zero one two okay so that is one two one this is one two one okay if we're going to look at pascal's triangle again that belongs here one two one there are two balls that are being drawn so there are three possible outcomes you have it here and these are the number of outcomes per value okay let's proceed to the next um, so where are we now okay next example suppose three cell phones are tested at random let x be the, the random variable representing the number of the defective cell phones at the core find the values of the random variable x so determine the sample space is here we go we are going to write it this way you have non-defectives you are going to write n and for the defective you're going to write d okay so you have three non-defectives then n and d and d n and d d then d n n d n d d d n and d d d possible outcomes you're going to write whatever is on your sample space then the value of the random variable would be this one you have zero one one two because you're talking about the value of the random variable x and x is the random variable representing the number of defective cell phones at the core so we'll just count which which uh, the number of letter d here so you will have zero then here one because you only have one d the next would be one then here two we have one d then two d then here we got two then we have here next would be okay classify each random variable as either discrete or continuous and copy the answer hmm. I think you are already done with this the number of arrivals at an emergency room are ah, not yet the number of arrivals at an emergency room between midnight and 6 a.m. The weight of a box serial labeled 18 on ounces. The number of applicants for a job. The temperature of a cup of coffee served at a restaurant. The number of boys in a randomly selected three child family. Recording the number of hours in specific students use their mobile phone for the past five days. Buying two trays of egg in the market. Recording the gender of the family members in the households of a certain barangay. The hotness or coldness of water, the average wavelength during the months of June and July. Okay. Okay. So, may I ask you about your breakfast, let's say dinner or lunch? How long have you? ate your breakfast and how many calories you consume okay so I want you to identify with this particular question as to whether or not it gives you a con a discrete or continuous random variable okay then here for your active activity notebook okay imagine you are having an actual measuring of height and weight what will it give you a discrete or continuous number two like you the number of text messages received in the day is that a discrete or continuous so just copy and answer right discrete or continuous beside each statement okay now how many outcomes corresponds if tossing a coin two times 
I want you to use the Pascal triangle. Pascal's triangle, I want you to present it and illustrate using the Pascal's triangle for answering this one, your activity notebook. Now, how many outcomes corresponds if tossing a coin two times? About four times and eight times. Then how are we going to find the possible values of random variable based on Pascal's triangle? Okay. Then another, we have find a set of possible values for each random variable and make a reasonable estimate based on experience when where necessary. The number of heads in two toes of a coin. The average weight of newborn babies born in a particular country in one month. The amount of liquid in a 12-ounce can of soft drinks. Okay. Still in your activity notebook, give examples of a discrete random variable. Give three examples of continuous random variable. Okay. Now this time we will proceed to our day four lesson objectives. Now defines discrete probability distribution. Illustrate discrete probability distribution correspond to its properties and appreciates the use of discrete probability distribution and its properties. Now discrete probability distribution and its properties. Now let's recall what is a random variable, the discrete random variable, continuous random variable. You have to remember that one. So what is then probability distribution of a discrete random variable? Here it goes. The probability distribution of a discrete random variable x is a list of the possible values of x and the corresponding probabilities of the values. Now, there are types of probability distribution. This is our probability distribution. You have discrete distribution. You also have the continuous dis distribution. The discrete distribution has finite or finite number of different possible outcomes, while the continuous distribution conti has infinite many consecutive possible outcomes. Now, the properties of discrete probability distribution number one. The probability of each value of the random variable must be between or equal to 0 and 1. So in symbol, the probability of each value x of the, of the random variable must be greater than or equal to 0 or less than or equal to 1. Then the sum of all the probabilities of all values of the random variable must be equal to 1. In symbol, we write it as Summation of P of X is equal to 1. Okay. Let's start by having an example. So determine if the distribution table at the right is a discrete probability distribution. So they call it discrete probability distribution. We're going to tell whether this, this um, distribution table is a discrete probability distribution based on its properties. So, if our x is 0, 1, 2, 3, p of x would be 2 over 10, 2 over 10, 3 over 10, 3 over 10. So, the answer will be, it is an example of a discrete probability distribution because if you're going to add the p of x, 2 plus 2, that is 4, plus 3, that is 7, plus 3, that is 10. So, a total of 1. 10 over 10 or equal to one. Therefore, it is a discrete probability distribution. Okay, next example. Example number two. Determine if the distribution table of the right is a discrete probability distribution. You have x is 0, 3, 5, 7. Then p of x is 0, 0.35. Then 0, 0.25. For 5, you have 0, 0.22. For 7, you have 0, 0.12. Okay, if you are going to add all this p of x the answer will be 0 0.94 so therefore it is not an example of a discrete probability distribution since p of x is 0 0.94 okay it should be one for it to be considered as a discrete probability distribution okay next example number three Determine if the distribution table at the right is a dis discrete probability distribution. You have x, random variable 0, 3, 5, 7. Then p of x is 2 over 7, 1 over 7, 5 over 7, then 1 over 7. So you have 2 plus 1, that is 3 plus 5, that is 
a plus 1 that is 9 over 7. Okay. So, it is not an example of a discrete probability distribution because the sum is 9 over 7 or 1 and 2 over 7 which is greater than 1. So, it should be only equal to 1 for it to be considered to be a discrete probability distribution. Okay, I hope you understand. It's very clear so far with the simple examples given. Okay, what about this one? Let's have example number 4. Now, determine if the distribution table at the right is a discrete probability distribution. We have x is 0, 1, 2, 3. P of x is 0 0.01, 0 0.32, 0 0.46, and 0 0.21. The answer is, if you're going to add it all, the answer is 1. Therefore, it is a discrete probability distribution since the sum is of P of x is 1. And all the values of the probability is between or is equal to 0 and 1. There are steps on how to illustrate the probability distribution of discrete random variable. So determine first the sample space in the given experiment. Find the possible values of the random variable. Then illustrate the probability distribution by assigning probability values or P of X to each value of the random variable. Okay. Example, suppose two coins are tossed. Let X be the random variable representing the number of heads and that of four. Find the values of the random variable x, illustrate the probability distribution of the random variable x. Step 1 and 2. Now the possible outcomes, we have your head, 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 tail, tail, head, and tail, tail. So the values of the random variable x, which represents the number of heads, you have here 2, here you got 1 head, here 1 head, and here. Since you got 2 tails, there's no head, of course, you, have, you will write 0. After which, you are going to write it this way, 0, 1, 2. Okay, why 0, 1, 2? Remember, 1 appears twice, but you are going to write that once only. So, you will write here, number of heads is 0, 1, 2. Okay, so illustrate the probability distribution by assigning probability values or P of X to each value of the random variable. So, that is step 3. So, P of X will be 1, 4. Then, 1 will be 2 over 4 then 2 will be 1, 4. You might be asking, why is it over 4? 4, because there are two possi uh, 4 possible values. You have 1, 2, 3, 4. And 0 appeared 1, so that's why 1, 4. And then, the, the number 1 appeared twice. So, so that's 2 over 4. And 2 appeared once. Okay? So that is 1, 4. Okay, let's continue. For developing mastery, we have Given the following table is a probability distribution for a random variable x which corresponds to the number of pens that children from a class have in their bags. So for example, you have here k, probability that x is equal to k. 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay? So you will have the number of pens that children from a class have their bags. So you have 0 0.15 for 1, or kid number 1. 2, we have 0 0.2, meaning the 1 um, pen. We have 0 0.15, the got 2 pens, you have 0 0.2, then 3, you have 0 0.35, then for 4 you will have A meaning this is a known okay then afterwards okay so this is the number of pens that children from a class have their bags. So identify the value of A. How are you going to get the value of A? So this is for how are you going to solve. Since the probability is 1, then 0 0.15 plus 0 0.2 plus 0 0.35 plus A is equal to 1. We need to equate 1 because our target is um, to solve for A to make it a discrete probability distribution. Therefore, 
a is equal to 1 minus 0 0.7 which gives us 0 0.3 so the answer the value of a must be 0 0.3 okay so in your activity notebook you have to answer the following what is discrete probability distribution and what are the properties of discrete probability distributions under evaluation we have instruction in your math activity notebook do the following construct a probability distribution for the prob probabilities that a student will borrow one two three or four books are 0 0.45 0 0.30 0 0.15 0 0.10 respectively then given an event answer the following now the number of defective fruits a farmer might have during his harvest are as follows 1, 2, until 8. Together with their probability is 5 over 500, 40 over 1,000, 45 over 300, 12 over 20, 2 over 20, 0, 2.1 over 30, and 3.2 over 30 respectively. These are, this is now the questions. I mean, these are now the questions. Follow-up questions from that given. Does the above event represents a probability distribution and explain number two if it represents a probability distribution then construct a probability distribution table okay so i hope that you learned something from today's video lesson this, so this is an entire week lesson though you already have an idea of some of the topics about this but you still have to complete and do the activities in your activity notebook okay so that would be all and thank you so much for watching and please don't sub uh, please don't forget to subscribe my channel and to end this video we will have a math code mathematics is the most beautiful and most powerful creation of the human spirit according to stefan banner okay so thank you so much and once again Always take care. Bye.